Okay, welcome to the Brand Coaching Power Hour, where I do most Tuesdays, 1.30 p.m. I have people who show up live to ask questions, and I can answer any of the branding and business questions live, or um, feel free to post um, below on the YouTube channel. I uh, Today, I have a little bit of content to cover. Number one, um, created by the fact that my guest client had to cancel last minute. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, and the next thing I'll talk about, um, if you're interested, please stay tuned. I will be covering how to prepare for a photo shoot or a video shoot. And I will also be talking about how to capture your own brand photos for special occasions, this is what I instruct and teach my clients on, um, how to actually get their own photos um, and how to be inspired by doing that, whether it's for your brand photos, um, monthly or quarterly photos that you need for content or specific holidays or vacations that you go on that you want to brand out for yourself. Um, so that's what I'll be discussing and also answering any questions for the people here live. I know that you can't see them, but I can see them. And for everyone live, go ahead and you can raise your hand or um, put in the chat um, what questions you have, or if you need clarity on something that I say, which will help everyone watching the replay as well. So number one, um, I know a lot of clients uh, talk about, you know, wanting to start a podcast, wanting to start um, posting on their YouTube channel, really wanting to dive into what I'm doing, whether it's, you know, this is my personal brand build, um, me giving free advice and information based off of my knowledge and value, or it's something that you get paid for or, you um, whatever the case may be, but you're going public <laughs> and you've already made a promise to your list and to people who are watching. And then all of a sudden someone can't join. So my guest today, I was really excited about, um, and she literally texted me 15 minutes ago. <laughs> so obviously no time to find someone new. So I wanted to coach anyone who is interested in knowing how to really handle something like that. Um, so I'm going to start with that. And number one is mishaps happen, right? Um, for whatever reason, her internet completely went out and there was no option of getting on. So um, there are people that just have mishaps happen. Things are going to come up and all of a sudden your guest won't be there and you're just going to have to fill in for them. Um, so there's that. And then there's also boundaries that you can put around if someone is a consistent no-show, which is not the case in this um, with this guest client. But if someone is a consistent no-show, I would have a po policy set for yourself. What are your non-negotiables? Is it two times that they say no or don't show and then they're never invited back? You know, whatever it is for you, I would say before you start actually diving into public, publicly promising people you're going to show up and with a guest to have those non-negotiables and those boundaries set up for yourself. So the second thing that is really important that I want to share around this is um, just knowing your content. So we have so much value that we all give our clients. And so literally 15 minutes ago, I'm like, okay, let me get ready to get on and do some last minute prep. And then the cancellation came through. So I'm like, okay, what value can I give today? So, you know, I'm a believer. I asked God, okay, God, what, what value needs to be given today? And I just follow the first thing that came up. So the first thing that came up was how to prep for a photo shoot and how to take your own images. So I pulled up my information really quickly. So just knowing your content and trusting in whatever guidance you're given or wherever your intuition leads you, um, but just having that content available is always gonna save you whenever you're in a situation where, oh, um, I'm, <laughs> this has actually happened before, I'm photographing this event and now all of a sudden I'm called on stage or in front of the camera. Like you need to always be prepared to be on and to be able to give value 
based off of the content that you coach or teach your clients around or something you talk about all the time, whatever the most value is that you can give in that moment to that crowd, being prepared with content is always a good thing, um, as well as dressing the part, right? You can go to an event and all of a sudden you're at the microphone and then you're in all their marketing images. And if you wore your pajamas that day, you're going to be very upset. Um, actually, no, that won't happen because they, they won't use those um, images and then you won't get the free marketing. So um, always being prepared um, in any scenario that you're in, whether it's content, um, the way you're showing up physically um, is always your best practice. <laughs> so now that I covered that and you can set your own boundaries, your own um, non-negotiables for when you start your podcast, for when you start whatever it is that you're doing, where you give a public promise that you're going to show up with someone and then they don't show up. Um, so, uh, so hopefully that helps anyone listening. Um, okay. Let me go into the actual content that I was guided to give to you today on this free brand coaching power hour. And number one is a photo prep checklist. So, um, you're more than welcome to go to my website, NikkiAndKandala.com, um, get one of my freebies um, that includes a photo prep checklist in it. And um, this is something that I give to all my clients before we work together. And one of the things that I really stress when it comes to photos, so the photography part of my business, um, is whoever is photographing you don't just leave everything in their hands. Really take responsibility for your own beingness when it comes to showing up for your photo shoot. Um, I say this because there are a million amazingly talented, beautiful, great photographers all around the globe. And I also say this because I have a lot of people and clients that come to me that hate their photos, had a horrible experience, and I'm I'm fixing what someone else did for them. Um, so I see this specifically for those photographers is really show up at your photo shoot, ready to take personal responsibility for your own beingness. And what does that mean? That means for your own energy that you bring, right? You're, if you're upset with a photographer because you're not getting enough direction, you don't know what to do, you don't feel safe or nurtured or taken care of, well, no offense, but too bad. You're in the spot. You need to not wallow, but go into problem solving at that point. So being the most prepared possible to take personal responsibility for your own energy, your own belongings, your own style, how things are really like rolling out for yourself is really going to just save you so much in that situation. So, um, let me pull up my list because I just don't want to forget anything uh, that is on it that I give to my clients. Um, so these are some super handy things to have in your back pocket. Um, well, maybe not in your back pocket because the first one's a mirror. So that might not fit. <laughs> but the first is a hand mirror. So you may show up at a location where there's no mirror. It's possible, right? Um, you don't know the location the photographer is taking you to it may be possible that there's no mirror there and you need to see what you look like. That's number one in taking personal responsibility for yourself and your own actions and your beingness on a photo shoot. So having a hand mirror, um, I have a double sided one because you know I require glasses. So one side is normal. The other side is 10X or 20X. I can't remember what it is. Um, hopefully it's just 10. <laughs> and, um, and so having a mirror with you um, will save you if all of a sudden you're in a location where there's no mirror, um, eye drops. So red eyes, if you couldn't sleep the night before because you were stressed or you know either about the photo shoot or something else that's going on in your life, um, having red eyes will absolutely make you look really tired in your photos. And it's probably something that may not be included in your retouching. So it's a quick fix. I specifically use um, Lum uh, Lumaire. Is that what it is? No, I'm like blanking on the name. It's by Bausch and Lomb. 
it is what I have found in my experience to be the absolute best remover of red eye. Um, if Visine works for you, what other brand works for you? But I specifically would use that Bausch & Lomb, um, which immediately gets rid of your red red eye so that you don't look tired or sick or um, really off. And that's sometimes a difficult thing to retouch in photos. So don't always rely on retouching. Um, that's something that's not included in my retouching um, that I provide for my clients. Um, okay, so the third thing is a lint roller. Um, something small, something super sticky and inexpensive, always have on hand. Um, I can't tell you, like, especially if you're wearing a dark color, how many little like lint drops that I have to, it takes a really long time to retouch that. And if your photographer says that's not included in your retouching, um, I do include that in my retouching, but not my light retouching. So when I process all of the images for my clients, I do light retouching. Um, that's not included. So now all of a sudden they have to choose the best out of the images from that style that they chose that has all this lint all over it. Um, I obviously um, try not to let that happen when I'm photographing my clients. I try to take care of everything to reduce the amount of retouching that has to happen on the back end, but you would be shocked by the things that my clients say to me, oh, you'll just retouch that, right? Like I'm talking like we're in Times Square and there's a full background of people. Like you could just retouch them out, right? Um, regular people who aren't photographers don't actually know what, what can be retouched and what can't be and what goes into that. You're just used to hearing it said. And so you think you know what it is. And I'm like, no, 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 um, <laughs> that that probably can be retouched by a $10,000 retoucher um, per hour, um, but not by my team like that. No, we need to fix this. So I fix anything to be photo ready in the moment. And I don't rely on retouching. I want to give my clients the absolute best end result I can when I'm in a photo shoot with them. So I take care of everything up front. But if you're not in that scenario, you want to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and claiming personal responsibility for how you're showing up for that photo shoot. Okay, next is double stick tape. This should be pretty obvious. Um, get the strongest kind that you can. You may need this for um, clothing mishaps, whatever it may be. Um, lotion. Uh, lotion helps with a number of things from putting a little bit of lotion on your hands and rubbing them together to help with the static. Um, situation that's happening with a uh, style or clothing um, that you're wearing. Um, you know, a lot of times that your dryness, if you have severe dry skin, um, that will look very ashy in your photos. You def I'm, that's not a retouching thing. You definitely want to make sure you take care of that. Um, and any like super dry spots that we typically all will have like elbows, knees, any type of joint area where we might have um, some dryness happening, you don't want that showing up in your photos. So a, just a tiny bottle of lotion um, should go in your uh, little packet that you take with you. Also a bottle of water. Um, I like to tell my clients um, Smart Water has electrolytes and um, it's, it's a clean water base. So I like to have my clients bring that. Um, it's specifically on my list for them. Um, a protein bar. Um, when you're hangry, you're not creating and exuding the essence of your best self. So make sure that you bring snacks and uh, make sure that you're not hangry during your photo shoot, um, that that's taken care of. Um, small scissors. Um, to remove everything, right? Like there's always like, oh, something's coming unraveled to like, oh, I've got to take the tags off of this new top to um, this shirt has a thread hanging out of it to hanger straps that are inside of clothing that are great for when they're hanging, but super annoying and like to stick out when you have it on. Um, so small little scissors, 
amazing to have on you. If you can have a little sewing kit, that's great too. Um, safety pins. Um, I say this and I actually did not have a safety pin on me in my kit for one of the last photo shoots I did and we needed it. So um, safety pins. Now I know I need to get those back into my kit. Um, okay. The number one thing for taking personal responsibility for yourself um, showing up for a photo shoot is your energy. Um, a few ways you can actually impact your own energy that has nothing to do with the person photographing you if they're not guiding you in a way that you feel really um, at your best or um, you're just feeling a little nervous or feeling shy, um, whatever it is. Um, I tell my clients to bring their favorite playlist, like have that song that immediately gets you out of a funk, that immediately gets you dancing, even if in your seat, um, that immediately gives you like a pumped up vibe for yourself. We all have different songs, different genres of music that work for us. Um, but have that playing on loop, on repeat all morning long. Um, here's what happens during our photo shoot or time of stress or whatever we're going into. You can do this if you're going to speak on stage. I've done this before too, where you have that little voice in the back of your head running. And I want my little voice to be singing my favorite song. <laughs> so when you listen to a song, your favorite song on repeat all morning long, before you speak, before you do videos for the day, before you have a photo shoot, your mind is going to go back to something, right? Your subconscious mind is always going to go back to something. So give it something great to go back to. That way you're really fully taking care of yourself. You're nurturing your own energy. And, you know, when you come to a blank spot, you're like, you'll hear that song start playing and you're like, okay, great. Um, or have that song ready to be playing, you know, at the beginning or during a photo shoot, obviously not a video shoot because, you know, sound is involved, but during a photo shoot, sound isn't involved. So you can have your favorite song um, ready to be played for the photographer, if you're in a scenario where music can be played and you're kind of noticing like a lull or down energy or you're really stressed, you're not feeling supported by your photographer, be responsible for your own energy. They will capture what shows up, right? So I'm a photographer that pulls the essence out of people. Not all photographers are like that. So I don't worry about that. My clients don't really worry about that. I can read, I'm very empathic, like I know what's going on and we have conversations during the photo shoot. Some photographers aren't like that. So just be prepared for your best case scenario. And if you have your energy in a high vibe scenario, um, then that's what the photographer will capture. Um, I can't promise your lighting or backgrounds, but that can be fixed <laughs> in a photo, but your energy can't be fixed in a photo. So, and that's going to convert and connect with people that see your photos, especially for a business purpose. Um, okay. So that's the, that's the main list that I give my clients and we talk about before a photo shoot. Um, if no one has any questions, who's joined live, you can put them in the chat or, um, raise your hand if you have, uh, a question about that piece. Okay, great. Fantastic insight. Um, okay, awesome. Um, like I said, you can use this info for going to speak on stage. Although I do um, advise a few other things if you're going to speak on stage, number one being a backup outfit. I was in Africa on assignment. I was photographing an event for 400 teachers in Liberia and also speaking at the event. So um, one of my roommates on that trip brought an outfit for her stage talk that exactly matched the background, which meant she would have disappeared into the background, which is not good <laughs> to do on stage. So I'm rummaging through my stuff. We were the same size. I gave her a black dress of mine to borrow and, um, she popped off the, the gold background and did a great job. Um, so I tell everyone, um, all my clients, you know, if you're going into a speaking 
um, scenario. You have no idea what the background is going to look like when you get there and you don't want to match it and you don't want to clash it. <laughs> Those are the two scenarios you don't want to find yourself in. Um, another quick piece of advice, since I'm on this piece, I didn't really plan on covering this, but um, let me give you one last piece of advice. Know ahead of time, if you're speaking, if you're going to be standing or sitting, um, if you're going to be sitting, um, especially for the females, be prepared. Um, whatever dress you're wearing will hike up to be shorter. So if you're wearing a short dress, that will hike up. Um, that will be very uncomfortable, um, not just for you, but everyone involved if there's a mishap there. Um, also, if you are wearing a dress or a top, you don't want it to have a side zip because when you're sitting in a side zip, um, what happens is, is it starts to create this weird shape and then you're, you're in photos, not really looking as like pristine and polished as what you want. And you'll have like this weird shape. If you do find yourself in a scenario where you have a side zip and you're asked to sit, if you're on a panel or something, um, just know that that could happen and cover it with your arm. <laughs> just so your photos and the photos that are, are going to be out there um, in the public's eye aren't like weird and funky for you. Um, <laughs> yes, you're definitely sitting. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I think that's it as far as um, prep list. Um, now let's go into, I'm going to give you some advice and some coaching uh, to go around using your own um, photos and taking your own photos. So this is something I teach in my, um, in classes that I've run in the past and also with my private one-on-one -on -one, uh, clients. And that is how to take your own camera photo brand photos. So we don't all have photographers following us around 24 um, seven, which is good and also bad when you need a great photo, right? So you need to know how to instruct others um, or like what I say is create your own little photo session, but be prepared ahead of time. So I have a um, lifestyle photo um, shot list that I give to clients as a little freebie and um, I'm gonna run through it really quickly. Um, but before I do that, think of, um, so you need content to put out there on social media and to connect with people in order to convert those people in those ideal people into clients. Um, so I have a lot of clients ask when I'm going on a speaking trip, I'm traveling, um, I'm going on vacation, I'm going into a holiday, and I want to continue to really provide content and um, create content while I'm in this phase, right? And so a lot of times what I'll say is, um, whether you want to look at your month ahead, oh, I'm speaking three times this month, or I'm speaking once this month, going on vacation once this month, oh, and we have a holiday. Okay, so you make that list, you write out all of your interests and activities that you'll be doing um, during those, those pieces, or you can do this for a single event. Like you're going on vacation. You want to build content while you're away because you're going to be with your family and they're part of your brand, one of your brand pillars, and you're going in this beautiful location and you want to make sure that you have some content to, um, continue to build your personal brand while you're in this vacation. Um, so what I say is um, make a list of those things, whether it's one event or a month full of events and write down all the activities and interests you'll be doing both personally and professionally at those events. So now that I've said that, I will go into the list and give you ideas. I'm just going to run through this really quickly. So take notes if you want or pause it and go get something to write with and um and I'll run through this list really quickly to give you ideas of what to have on your branding shot list. This isn't necessarily just for travel or holidays. Um, so travel is the first one. <laughs> um, and if you travel a lot and you travel for your business, um, one of the things I ask my clients is, do you travel? Do you travel to your clients? Do your clients travel to you? 
Do you travel a lot? Is that part of your brand pillar? Um, is that part of your lifestyle? And if it is, we give them a travel photo where I have them bring their suitcase. We find a place that looks like a hotel or maybe we're in a hotel or looks like an airport in order to give them a travel photo so that they have a content photo piece to match their messaging and copy on that specific topic. Um, having or making coffee or tea, morning rituals, but you know, list out your morning rituals. So when we create a, a shot list for my clients, we list out their morning rituals. Okay, you have coffee in the morning. Where are you having coffee? Do you want to bring with you a specific coffee cup for your photo shoot that means something to you or has an inspir inspirational saying on it? And then we add that to the prop list. So we have a whole prop list that we create for my clients. Um, so morning rituals, but not just morning rituals, but like list them out. Um, journaling, reading, meditating, those could be your morning rituals. Um, but those are separate on my list. Um, Facebook lives, if you do Facebook lives, if you do videos, if you do video calls, Zoom calls, um, webinars, um, working on your laptop. Where do you work on your laptop? Where do you want to be perceived working on your laptop? Are you like the laptop um, entrepreneur where you travel around the world working, then you want to be seen and perceived in different areas working so that you can talk about that and have content, photo content to match that. Um, talking on your phone, um, you know, not, my phone is right here. Not everyone talks on their phone like this. Some people talk on their phone like this. It's important to be authentic. So you're not like awkward doing something weird that you don't normally do in your photos. So do what you do in an actual live situation um, and have it photographed that way. Um, if you have a headset, um, yoga or exercise, champagne or celebrating, wine, prayer, um, podcasting, uh, speaking on stage, shopping, interviewing with a client, um, unboxing a product, taking a bubble bath. And yes, I have actually <laughs> included that in a photo shoot before. Um, my client taking a bubble bath, um, cooking, uh, cuddling with your sweetie, whether it's a four-legged furry sweetie or um, your kiddos, um, inspirational quotes, a creating art, if you create art, um, a studio tour, teaching, meeting an influencer. Um, you always want to get pictures of that. Um, when you're out, sharing your favorite coffee shop, uh, sharing your favorite food, giving a shout out to a person or business that gave you great service. These are all ideas and inspiration and suggestions on a lifestyle shot list that I have um, now. And it's so funny because um, my friend and client Alicia is actually live and I know you can't see her as you're listening to the recording, but Every time I talk about this, I think about um, her, one of her scenarios. So I'll just share that. Um, so as you're going into your list that you've created, how I guide my clients is go to Google Images or Pinterest and literally take the keywords of that little event, meditating. Um, I'll use her event, um, baking with her kids, uh, baking cookies at the holiday time with her kids. And um, it's always what I think of when I when I teach this. And um, and so go to Pinterest and Google Images. Um, there is also Adobe Stock Images. Um, I don't use that as much though. Um, Pinterest I find is the best, as well as Google Images is a uh, quick second for me. And literally put those words into the search engine and see what comes up. And then keep refining your keywords of what your search is until you find the right images that really draw your eye in. Um, you're going to want to screenshot these or save these to a board so that you have instant access to them when you're ready to take those photos. And you can set up. So if you're doing brand photos for the upcoming month. Um, what I advise my clients to do when they're doing their own photos in between our photo shoots is to actually create a little photo shoot like they would have a girlfriend come over, have their spouse available and literally just like bang out these photos of these activities within an hour or two hours and just have everything done. 
That way it's not all of these constant, obviously if you're in a scenario, you want to um, get photos of that scenario. If you're gonna be speaking on stage somewhere, um, it's gonna be hard for your husband to <laughs> capture that on his own in your bedroom. <laughs> so <laughs> you wanna get certain um, situations photographed and be prepared for, but if you're just doing like a quick brand or preparing for a holiday where everyone's coming over or Alicia baking cookies with her kids, um, you go to the search engine and you type in the keywords and you screenshot scenarios and pictures that you love. There are going to be different angles. There's going to be different lighting. There's going to be different backgrounds. You know, you'll be so inspired. Maybe you don't want to photograph baking cookies in your kitchen. Maybe you actually want to do it on your dining room table instead because you see a photo that inspires you to change the environment. So, um, so once you get all of those screenshots for your entire list, now you're prepared to go into your photo shoot and have either a spouse, your girlfriend, um, in some cases, your kids. I mean, Eve, I've even seen like some of my clients, super young kids take amazing photos of them with their phone. Um, I have a lot of photos that I use as my brand photos that I've taken with my phone, obviously. So I teach this a lot. Um, I believe in the power of having your professional photos and making sure those are up to date and valid with what you're matching your content, your messaging and copy content with. But um, also making sure that people get to see you on a regular basis and you're not just using professional photos. So I'm not one of those photographers that say only use the photos we take together. I actually do not think that's the most powerful way to authentically brand yourself. I think that people need to see you consistently to know that you're a real person and to know what you look like. My hair is a little bit blonder right now. So it doesn't match some of my photos that wasn't planned. Um, so it doesn't match some of my photos now, <laughs> but still, you know, I'm showing up, taking my own camera photos, doing my own reels, still providing con providing and making content that is valuable, um, with how I look today. Um, so that's always going to allow people to know and trust you, um, which those are two of the main, um, pieces that you need in order to convert those connections that you've made. Um, so I don't know if anyone live has any questions. I know, um, thank you guys are like filling up the chat. That's brilliant. That's helpful. Um, yes, of course they refuse to cooperate <laughs> as they should. <laughs> um, Okay, they made funny faces. That's cute too. You know what? Then they have to deal with the consequence of that being public. <laughs> Tell them that. <laughs> um, okay, great. Okay, Jackie, do you want to unmute yourself? You can ask your question. Hi, yeah, I just had a question about um, taking the pictures at home. So what about using a tripod? I don't really have my husband. I mean, he could, yeah. Yeah. I'm just think. Can I just use a tripod and do you recommend one? I've got so many of them and they all, they're, I need a new one. I think <laughs> tripods could work really well. Yeah, I've definitely used tripods a lot. I've leaned my phone against banisters and couches and whatever I can find when I'm on location to take my own videos and photos. Um so yeah, that's a, that's a great option. And the fact that there's like the three second or the 10 second, um, self timer gives you so so much um, time that you need to get into um, place. And usually, I'll take like I don't know ten photos, and that way I have one to choose from out of that lot. Um, I don't have a tripod that I would recommend, but I have features of a tripod that you could look for. So obviously something really small that you can either keep in your bag or travel with is gonna be best. Um, but also one that has extending legs, that way you can use it as a short tripod if you have the height that you need to get the video or photos. Um, but then if you don't have the height to lean it on, um, then you can extend those legs to create more height. Um, so that's what I would, 
would recommend something small that you can travel with and that has also extending legs so that you have that extra height um, or shortness that you need to be at the right level to get the right angle for you and what you're up to. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, good. You're welcome. Um, let me see. Uh, what do you recommend when we genuinely don't feel photogenic? Especially taking our own pics. Okay. Um, two, two things. <laughs> Number one, um, go back to your favorite song, like get your energy pumped up. Um, so I spent my life feeling very photo unphotogenic. And in high school, I actually um, made a declaration to myself that I just have to be fine with never looking good in photos my entire life and had to be okay with it because I was sick of crying every time I saw a photo of myself. <laughs> and so, um, so I was able to fix that. I know um, the person who asked this question is a male, not a female. So um, uh, one of the ways I really helped myself with that is my energy. So really showcasing my energy because what I found was Every time I went to take a photo, that sneaky little voice in the back of my head said, I take horrible photos. <laughs> Guess what happens when you do that to yourself? You take horrible photos. So what I personally did was I started to use makeup to really accentuate my favorite features about my face. And I started investing more into, um, that's when I got trained with makeup. And then I started doing my client's makeup until I got just too busy and I couldn't wear that hat anymore. It's funny because a lot of people don't know that I used to do my client's makeup when I first started photographing them. Um, can you imagine? Cause I know like Jackie and Alicia are on there. <laughs> can you imagine if I was like, okay, I'm ready to do your makeup and your photos. <laughs> That's what I used to do. So, um, so for me, it was makeup, but I know that there are certain things that even men can do um, that can help, uh, appearance wise, like you guys can use anti shine, right? If you feel like you're super shiny in photos and you don't like that about yourself in photos, um, there are certain, like, I mean, it's come so all the products have come like so far with like technology and advancement. It's really cool. Um, you can use concealer if you have like a lot of redness on your face and you know you're going into a photo situation. Um, you can have someone teach you how to properly use concealer where it's not actually going to show up. Um, when you're in person with people, um, if you're just going into a photo shoot, it, it won't show up. Um, although I don't put makeup on my male clients, um, if they required it in certain areas, like I get really red, like under my nose area. So that's a spot that I always put concealer on when I'm doing my makeup in the morning. Um, so that could be an issue that someone is experiencing that's a male also. Um, also, I literally got asked this question the other day. I was in the middle of a photo shoot with a client and she had gone to change. And this guy who was running an event at the hotel we were at um, started chatting me up and he was like, how can I do this? How can I do that? Like, what do you, like, and he started asking me all these questions and I gave him so much advice and I was so passionate about the products I was sharing with him. He was like, do you sell this stuff? I'm like, no, am I giving you a shopping cart? I'm just telling you where to go. So um, one of the things that he was worried about was his like under eye bags. And so I gave him a product that I personally use by Westmore Beauty that literally like seals in and tightens up and like instantly removes your under eye bags. Um, and is um, not visible as, as makeup. Um, so that was one of his issues. But number one is energy, like get your energy up and flowing and like this is gonna be amazing photo and I'm gonna take a few different options. So I'm gonna get the right one and I have one to choose from. Like that's number one always. Um, number two for women or men is um, a certain level of makeup. For, for women, obviously, um, we're more known to wear makeup for men, um, you know, uses your discretion, how I just shared. Um, and the last, um, the second part of this is using filters. <laughs> so Instagram has filters that I don't love. Um, I think that it looks like a filter when I take a photo, it like, makes my skin orange. It looks like I have more makeup on. Like I, I just don't love 
the Instagram filters, I think that they look like filters when I take a photo um, or do a video. So I actually use Snapchat. I don't know how to use Snapchat. It's the only thing I use Snapchat for is taking photos and videos. So sometimes I'm in a dark lit spot and a filter will actually help correct that and lighten me up. Um, other times I'm just looking really tired that day <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I need a little help. So I personally always use a filter that is like a natural glow or a natural no filter filter. Um, if I'm doing something specific, like sending someone a birthday wish, or I literally was just talking about this the other day. Um, cause I have a client who has a few non-paying clients. And when I was coaching with them, I shared with them my tactic on that, which is when I can't get a client to respond to me, I will open my Snapchat, choose a really silly filter, whether it's like hearts pop up or like sunglasses show up on my face, or I'll do something really funny and silly. And I will record a video and send it to them. So if there's a little bit of a sting in the environment and energy between you and someone and you're not able to get a hold of them, that's a it's a really great thing to do to just kind of lighten. Okay, this person's not mad at me. They just want to have a conversation or we just need to deal with this. Um, and then it takes that like little bit of like sting out of the um, energy and allows them to feel safe to reach back out to you. Um, so, um, and then obviously what you say to them, right? Like, I just want to talk about a game plan. Um, you know, I'm not mad. Um, I'm frustrated more by your not answering, but I totally get it and just get a hold of me. Let's just talk about like how to move forward. And then they have that reassurance. Um, so I got off on a tangent there and gave you an additional tip that I wasn't planning, but, um, but that's great for that. But filters is another way. And for men, it's a little bit harder because you don't want to look like you have makeup on. If you use a filter, you definitely want to use a no filter filter effect um, because that will give you an effect of just a little bit of softness and more light in the photo um, as opposed to, um, you know, making it look like you have makeup on. Another thing is, is that you want to face a window. Like I'm outside right now. Hopefully it's not super loud because uh, there's a lot of landscaping happening. Um, but so I have the natural light of um, the environment in front of me from the window. So light um, does amazing things for us in photos. It washes away wrinkles and fine lines. It fills all the shadows in that make us look old in a photo. Um, I literally have clients as soon as their makeup done, is done during a photo shoot, go to take a selfie and every single time um, their back is to the window as they're taking it. And I literally just grab their shoulders, turn them around to face the window. And they're like, oh, I'm like, yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> So a lot of my clients will look younger in their photos and that has to do with their energy, their energy and their essence that was captured, but also light because it fills in all of the shadows and lines in our face. So a certain amount of light will actually bring, um, you don't want too much light because that removes the depth of your features, but um, the right amount of light will actually help you look younger and better in your photos. So um, hopefully that's um, helpful. Let me see. Do you consult with prospects or clients on how to set up, decorate, and light um, studios? Where we do uh, videos and video consultations. You know, I did a class once. It was during COVID um, on how to look amazing on Zoom because I just found that so many people just had no idea. I, I didn't know that people didn't know just to like, make sure that their face is in the is in the screen you know <laughs> it's like they're they're like like showing up like this and they're like I don't know um I just had no idea that people did not know that until all of a sudden the world knew about zoom 
that we had been using as entrepreneurs forever. And, um, and so I did do a class on how to look good on Zoom. Um, I have actually done this for clients before, um, but I don't, I've never done it as like a one-off. So yes, I, I have done it. Um, helped my clients pick lighting and their background, but, um, but I don't do that as a one-off. Like you can't hire me to do that. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Okay, Alicia. I have one, but it's a little bit off topic. Is okay. do you want me to save it or is it okay? No, it's okay. Okay. So I think I just need a little Nikki mindset tune up. Um, I'm getting ready to start a podcast. And, you know, one of my like if I would describe my style, it would be like very classic, but with an edge. In fact, my company being the conscious edge. Right. And the podcast theme is around helping entrepreneurs become compassionate leaders, align their passion, purpose, and prosperity. And I'm being asked to choose my music. And like, I'm a little bit rock and roll. Like, you know, I have my like moto jacket, my moto boots and like, yet yeah, yeah. very classic, right? And so I am drawn, like the energy is a little rock and roll that I'm drawn to, but I feel like it's confusing with my brand. Okay, like, why, do you, why do you think it's confusing? Talk well, because that. I'm talking about like compassionate leadership and like feeling your feelings and then I'm a little rock, like there's this rock song in this podcast. And I was like, oh, I think I'm trying to be someone I'm not. <laughs> Which isn't true because you're actually being the person that you are. <laughs> right. Well, no, right. I mean, this, this need to like, want to choose something more. Oh, uh, yes. Happy, joyful, compassionate, loving, which is a hundred percent me. But the music part of me is always like the thing, the energy that I bring is a little bit rock and roll. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of songs that mix genre, right? So there are a lot of songs that have like a rock edge to it, but yet it's like a softer melody. So I would choose something like that then if you're feeling torn, because that's also you, you have this like softness, this compassion, this like I feel completely accepted and able to be vulnerable in Alicia's space. And also like we can rock out together <laughs> and she's going to be lovingly honest. And like, there's, there's going to be some like, you know, harsh truths that I might need to like hear and take in. And so that's like that edge. Right. So mm -hmm. I would choose, I would, just spend some time, like throw it into Google um, and see what kind of songs come up. And I bet you anything, you'll find a song that is like soft melody, but like a rock edge to it. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. And, and maybe, that. <laughs> well, what's your, do you have a walk on song when you speak? So I love stadium rock. <laughs> like, like, anything um oh the larceny which nobody knows but oh my gosh if you want to be pumped up before stage turn on some oh the larceny and you will just like okay. be ready <laughs> okay like I can't drive if I'm listening to um pink because all of a sudden I realize I'm going like 150 and I'm like oh no <laughs> so yes there are like some yes I totally get it um so yeah, I would, um, I'd play around, but I, I have a, I'm guessing that the new song that you find would probably like be a walk on song for you too. Okay. Yeah. Is that helpful? Yes. But I think mixing and really making sure it's authentic to like who you really are is, is super important. So I think the mixture, cause we all have different sides to our personality, right? Like I remember, um, I was dating this guy and um, I was sharing with a friend something about him. She hadn't met him yet. And I was like, um, well, he's just really raw. And she was, she looked at me and she was like, Nikki, you are my most raw friend I have. Like you say things that other people don't. And the things that come out of you are like always kind of a little shocking. She's like, you are raw, my friend. And I was like, oh, 
I, you know what? I am. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we have all of these different sides to our personality. So I think like when it's something like that, finding a mixture that really like sets the tone for who they're, who's going to be showing up as their host is like the best way to go. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Anything else you guys? Okay, good. Thank you so much for showing up live. I'm so sorry. Um, my guest client wasn't here, but hopefully what I gave was complete value to you or reminders to my clients who showed up live and I just adore you guys. And um, yeah, check out the next episode here on YouTube. I'm Nikki Cadello with your brand coaching power hour, rebranding coaches, coaching session. So let me know if you want to join live and um, we'll see you next time.